typically, a king is sovereign and he has power uh, in the state. The king has the respect of the people, but the government have the power. Recently, the power tussle between the governor of Oyo State and has taken another turn as the Oyo State High Court, presided over by Justice Olajuwa Kaiki, has declared the installation of the 21 kings by the state governor, Abiola Ajimobi, as unconstitutional, illegal, null and void, and of no effect. So we ask, who really should be in charge in the government? You know what was so interesting about this article? Because the Olubano was saying that, listen, I'm not going to be celebrating and be excited mm -hmm. over something that I already know. That's the right thing to do. Um, and I don't also want to also focus so much on this, this case mm -hmm. because we don't want to get into the political angle mm -hmm. of it. Because they have even gone to appeal. So gone to appeal, so anything right. can happen. Mm -hmm. But the question is, in, our, in, our, in, in Nigeria, do you think the monarchs should have super, superseding authority over the government or should it be the, the other way around? Who wants to go? Maria, uh, yes, go Okay, ahead. for me, I think, you know, that when it comes to traditional system and traditional way of doing things, in my personal opinion, the traditional leaders should be the ones that have supremacy when it comes to those matters. Politicians should concentrate on political matters. You know, it would be naive for us to say we, we haven't heard of stories where politicians have used, you know, their political clout to settle political clout um, um, scores. Yes. Do you understand? So you have a, a governor or politician, I'm not saying that's what's happening in this right, case, right. who comes in and then for political benefits, he either deposes one oba or one king and insults another one and that has always been a problem so i think that traditional system traditional matters should be handled by traditional rulers in, and in then a, politicians in our system today have, that everybody is driven by money that's what that's the driving force for, for elections mm -hmm. politics the whole works the others don't have the kind of money that these government officials are wielding so so if you feel if you think that the others have the ability to actually galvanize people. Yes, it's because they have money taken from the government. They don't have, because we don't do farming. You know, like, you know, back then, the, 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 the monarchs, they, they have their territories where they, where they are growing plants and, I mean, they're growing fruits and they, they sell and they have their own, they have access to their own resources. But now, everything's owned by the federal government. So, who, who, who pays the piper? For me, I think mm -hmm. the, um, the um, government should wield its power because, Number one, they have the functional power. They are the one piloting the affairs of the nation. So they have that power to put who here and who there and all really? of that. Yes. Okay. The uh, monarchs shouldn't have that kind of power because, like you said, they do not even have the resources that will help them do what they are supposed to do. So they should manage their scope. They should handle traditional issues that surround their scope. They are more like peacemakers in the society and not having powers to say, okay, this and this should be this and make it law. Can I say something? You see, before the colonialists came in, <laughs> ah, <laughs> you know me, I will go there. Before the colonialists, they are not my masters, they are colonialists. Hmm. When you say colonial master, you, you accept colonial them as your master. master. They are not my master. When the colonialists came in, they, the monarchs were already ruling. They came and then took over. And now, they started, th 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 so we, we now still maintain that system. system of the colonialists by the government uh, saying, okay, you are the Oba, mm. you are the this. Okay. It, that is not the way it was in those days. Yes. You, it was by family uh, or by hierarchy or by... Yeah. Um, Mike, what, I, exactly. what I'm hearing her say is that civilization birth, has taken over. People are more over. enlightened now. So the Oba doesn't have that kind of effect anymore. They don't have. I, we, I agree that because it is the government that has the money. Exactly. So because the government ha has the money and a lot of the traditional rulers have become a, they are sucking up yeah, yeah. to the, the, politi the politicians or the soldiers because when it was the soldiers it was the same thing. Yeah, exactly. So it was them giving them handouts and that is where they have lost yeah, really touch with reality. Okay. Mm. But the real thing, the only bad don't say that it is it, really He's, it's, what, what concerns Ajumobi with uh, 
Yeah, oh, yeah, but like I said, we don't want to go into the ocean because they are still appealing and anything can be turned around. Uh, even if it's when, turned around, I would still say the same uh, thing. Wait, see, because so at, some, <laughs> at some point, they had said that you had the constitutional power mm. to install. I read it you know, earlier. Back yes, back and the then. committee was headed by Justice Akintu Debade, meaning that I'm sure that the legalities of it was gone through. You know, they yes, went now, through that. That's what I thought. So that means the governor really thought he had the authority to do what he did. It's not that he woke up one morning and, and then he picked to. people from anywhere because these people are actually chiefs in council. Yes. Do you understand? And he the promoted them. Yes. So what happened between the time of setting up this committee to the time so that they were installed? The, so the question you now, Mary, so the me, question now to me is that should we then push for the relevance, for the empowerment of our obas? Because our Oba Akelu is right here, you know. We see him, but a lot of people respect him. But does he have the power to tell the governor you are doing, you know, can, can, he, can he tell, can, can he be full control? The, of si the, on system the, where, the system we are operating will not even give room to that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? The system, the government is... But well, should we go back to that? No, I don't think it's necessary for us to go back to that. I think they sh the, the, the monarchs should be given their place as monarchs. They yeah. should have their say so, in certain things as monarchs. You know, in which but things? Not, because since they don't have, have power, what no, are they there no, for? No, no, they, for they, me, they, no. They actually handle uh, uh, um, um, disputes. land disputes land and all family disputes and all of that on that level. You know, they but, should be on that level. But in this case, it's not the problem of the monarchs overstepping their bounds. It's actually the government, the government yes. interfering. Right. So now the monarchs know their place. But I think what we're trying to find out is, do they still have the same clout they used to have because of the have that because we've not we had have the all resources. these issues with Fulani herdsmen, all these issues where even Boko Haram is festering. Mm. It is those monarchs that if had if they had full control mm. in the beginning, they would have cut those things, nipped it in the bud before it got to the level where now we need military men. Let me take Julius and I come to you, Waki. Julius, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the uh, rest ladies. Yes, go ahead. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, we, are, <coughs> we are talking about uh, civilization that we should not uh, we should be dancing to the music of the uh, the dancing of the, to the music of the politicians we cannot be dancing to the pol pol uh, 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 music of the politicians right. and we have no right to install any king in uh, any battle let me tell you something i am from encouraging and i live and i live in england when i got to spain in the united time before spain was under the dictatorship of uh, general francis franco in the united States, when he went to die the king came back because he sent the king away. The king came back. Now, you cannot, because of civilization, tell the, king, the, the queen of, of, of England, the king of Spain, the king of Holland, that, oh, they are civilization, we don't want you anymore. Mm -hmm. After all, they are not doing anything. That is exactly how we should continue with our tradition and our cultural heritage. Thank you very much, Julius. It's interesting I'm how so we... happy. Thank you. We like to choose what we want to do tradition. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, no, no, no. Exactly. Listen, listen to what every, he said. Yes. Not in every case. What I, 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 I like about what he said is, the queen of England, whether there is a prime minister or not, she still takes her rightful place. And when the prime minister is uh, installed, because she will be there, yeah, they yeah. will come and go. Yes, the, he, exactly. he will go there and take yes. it must pay homage. Mm. Exactly. Politicians and, come and go and then, every four years. Yes. But you wow. know, the um, monarchs are there from many decades, from uh, centuries before. Exactly. Yeah, and that's where we from, uh, from. from Ikorodu. Are you there? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Uh, by virtue of uh, what is on ground in Nigeria, by the way we play our politics, as at least today, the politicians have the superior power over their monarchs. Mm. Because there is no king that would be installed that would not be given a staff of office. Who gave the staff of office? Is it not the governor or whoever? Right. So, who plays the pass the tune? The tune. The other time. Mm -hmm. Now let me let me let me just tell you, Marago, your your husband is from Ikere. You know what is happening in Ikere today? Yes. Yeah. Look at and Oguga. Yes, a priest who is now claiming to be a monarch, having thoughts all about killing people all about, beating the shield. Now you want government to fold their hands and be watching that kind of monarch? So, the, the issue of uh, the superiority between uh, political leaders and uh, monarchs do not even come up because okay. the politicians are the superior power. Over All right, thank monarch. you very much for your view, Mr. Olayinka. But, I mean, it's important to talk about these things because 
we are pushing for constitutional review. Yes. And it might be time for us to bring up these issues that, okay, what exactly is the... Because we've seen the government have full power. Mm -hmm. And we've seen how it's, a, it's been where our monarch seems... They seem less yes. um, uh, able to, 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 to wield their power. So is it possible that if we do that switch or do something where it's such that both can work together in that level. The, Maybe things will be different, but let's take a few tweets. Why yeah. can't you mean your dad says governance has evolved, monarchs reign supreme in the Stone Age. Welcome to the platinum platinum <laughs> age of politicking. Okwayemi Yek says monarch or politicians who should be in charge of government. They have different roles and responsibilities. Mm. Monarchs have permanent power or office, politicians have temporary stays in office. Seedorf right. says traditional institutions are I can't bastardize because all have interest in money, not interest of the people. Okay, mm -hmm. we have to take a break now, unfortunately, but the, the, we can still thrash the topic another time with the, with the guest. But we want to just talk about the fact that people are just saying, remember the argument over going on Ulubado and mm -hmm. the, the governor. So the idea is just to discuss why is why does it seem that our kings these days don't have the kind of power? But unfortunately, we have to stop right yeah, there. Because let's take let's take a break. When we come back, it's Healthy Tuesday. Cervical cancer is our topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Yes, thanks for staying with us. So cervical cancer, we've said it several times. Uh, at this point, it should be no news to you. We have discussed it so many times on this show. A recent research states that more than half of women diagnosed with cervical cancer die in Nigeria. Joining us to shed more light again is a medical doctor, Dr. Femi Olaleya. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank Welcome. you. Now, just for those watching for the very first time, mm -hmm. have no idea what cervical cancer is. So Judy, just start from the basics. What okay. is cervical cancer and how do you diagnose it? Yes, yeah, cervical cancer is the cancer of the neck of the womb of a woman. Every woman has got a womb and the neck of the womb is the opening. And for practical purposes, it's designed to have a hole there to allow a period of a woman to come out. If the woman is lucky and has sex regularly, um, the sperm will go in through the cervix to go and fertilize the eggs. And when a woman gets pregnant, the cervix has to open to allow the baby to come out. And more importantly, close so that the woman will not bleed to death. It's a very functional organ. Most women will never even get to know about their cervix mm -hmm. because they don't get to see it. But it's actually the number one killer of women in Nigeria mm. when it comes to cancer. A woman dies every hour from cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. And guess how they get it? Through the men, yeah. From us guys. Because mm. the men will be doing about like cockroach. And thank you, Auntie Shani. Auntie Shani. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly because we go around like cockroach. Because we've been blessed with this gift of HPV as a normal flora on our body. It doesn't do anything to us. Cannot penetrate. But when we penetrate women, we transfer the virus to women, right. and that's our gift to you. Um, sadly, I don't want to be gifted. I know. <laughs> Sadly, women don't know this, and therefore they are not prepared for this diagnosis. So when they start having symptoms, doctors are helpless. But thankfully, about four decades ago, a Greek pathologist called Paponicolo, George Paponicolo, discovered that if you can check the woman's cervix throughout her reproductive life, you can detect the abnormalities mm. on the cervix before it develops to cancer. And that's from the basis of the developed world screening all their women and doing the so-called Pap smear. 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 And sadly, we are still in the Stone Ages. Our do government don't think you women care or matter, and you never have a national survival <coughs> screening program. But despite all what I've said, the World Health Organization recognizes this challenge, and it's made January, the first month of every year, as a month of cervical cancer awareness, simply because it's the number one priority for women, particularly women who are already having sex. What are the symptoms? Okay, I don't like talking about symptoms because most people switch off, or most people panic. Okay? Vagina discharge. Allow me, allow me to panic. <laughs> <laughs> but 
<laughs> most people panic and go, oh my God, he's probably talking about me. So that might get people to go and do their screening. Exactly. But most women will never have a symptom. So I don't want you waiting until these symptoms. But the commonest symptoms are discharge, which are really not specific. A lot of women discharge, but this one will be offensive. They never go away. At times, they are bloodstained. Women bleeding all over the place. Women, you're supposed to bleed during your period. That's why we call it a period. Mm -hmm. You bleed, you stop. Mm -hmm. You bleed, you stop. But if you're bleeding all over the place, that's a very, very red flag. And more importantly, if you bleed after sex. Women shouldn't really bleed after sex. And that is not acceptable. Either. This is the first time I'm hearing this this interesting. Because mm. I'm curious. I've been hearing cervical cancer, cervical Thank cancer. You. And I feel like, mm, these are not things for me. me. You know, I believe, I have faith, I can't have these kind of things. And But the way you explained it now, I'm Thank curious. You and I want to go and do that screening. God so how you. do you get this information to an average woman out there? Who, who have faith. Mm. Who believe that? We'll, we'll yeah. come there who later. No, no, By no, the way, no. all of us, let's do this. It's not our portion. <laughs> it's, not no, my it's not our portion. <laughs> that what goes on every day. Yes. But it doesn't affect so, HPV. Mm, mm, and women need, need to know. To as long as you are doing it, uh, I don't know whether we can mention that word on TV now, uh, but as long as you're doing it, and you all know what I'm talking about, and some are lucky they've done it this morning already, Please go check. <laughs> How do you make this interesting for people? Oh, that's the whole idea. Your life, you're going to die. <laughs> no, that, that, that's, that's actually a very valid point because people switch off and they go, I don't want people going in there. Uh, you know, women, you're generally like that. Mm -hmm. But the one of the reasons why I like making it so basic, the way I'm doing it, is to make people recognize three important factors. You need to get this thing done because they are doing it all over the world. Okay. And women are therefore living longer. If you don't want to die at 40, 45, 50, which is when most women in Africa die from cervical cancer, please, if you can open up for him, please open up for a doctor. Okay, see. Second one. <laughs> Yes, we all have faith. It's not our portion, <laughs> yeah? But the Lord has opened the eyes of understanding of medical sciences mm. to, to know these things so that people can live longer. And thirdly, we need women to survive in this country. In other parts of the world where they don't understand that women form the bedrock of society, they take care of their women. It's a shame and a travesty of justice to our women that there's no plan to save our women from a disease see, that kills 20 I, a day. Wow. I totally agree so there's no other way to say this other than to let people know, please, mm. Ignore government, ignore anything else, take your own life into your own hands and go get checked. Let me ask you this ahead, um, question. See, I was born in Jos, I grew up in the north, hmm. and there's a way we're brought up. We tend to be a little less in forward, <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> that you are, yes, now the southern ladies, yeah. do you understand? So, some of these issues are very. I don't understand. You don't understand. We meet you. Bold. <laughs> Okay, bold. Yes, okay. All right, is that better? <laughs> All right. So we tend to be a little more, you know, conservative. conservative. Going to the doctor is a big deal for us. It's a and then we ass. go and open Sorry. our, uh, the, you know, and just, you know. Mm. So what, what, what sort of measures do you take for that woman in the north, in the village, who really, you know, is even, is not, is part, is, is okay. ever against her culture and her, her actually, religion to be as open. I feel this way. I've gone screening, I've done screening Cardinal in uh, Mina in some in lots of northern states. Despite the fact that I'm even a guy mm. and I'm talking about these things. Once they hear cancer mm. and there's a person doing a test, everybody understands that. They will pull up their product and say, Doctor, where come? Seriously. Yes. Now, but the reality of it is that we have to be sensitive, culturally sensitive exactly. to our people. Three important things we've done with our work is to work with the first ladies in these localities, mm -hmm. speak their dialect to them, and they use only female-only <coughs> members of staff Good. to oh. make it easy for them. Okay. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, I get to talk about it, but most of my staff, are, okay. all my staff Ground. are female. Okay, doctor, so that helps. Dr. Femi, let me just come. Let me just tell you right here now. Mm -hmm. Mm. When I went to your office... Yes, ma'am. I really felt violated, not violated, mm, but mm, mm, <laughs> because mm. you had to go there mm, and, and it was very uncomfortable. And mm. I'm like, so I've been running away to go and because you started the procedure. Yeah, he found some, he found some, some organs on my cervix. Ah. I mean, some, some, whatever it okay, is. Okay, Dr. And you now did them, you now did them, <laughs> cryo or something, cryo therapy. Not painful. And he asked me, no, it wasn't painful. Yeah, he asked me to do something. But the idea of Dr. Femi just being there, like, ah, yeah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to see this man again. So, so the idea of coming back to you is really, really scary. That's imagine. what has kept me away. I, I can imagine. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Embarrassing. Thank you, Mariah. No, no. Come back. No, she's just admitting that she has a crush on me. So. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh, Mr. 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 Brown, please. So. <laughs> 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 
because usually girl ladies you, you you admit that if you feel like oh i don't want doctor to see me it's because there's some well if you don't really not care really. if you uh, don't really no, care my about who sees you it's so not true that's yeah. not true okay really for thank me you, i don't want my doctor ladies. to be the person i also chat with on a regular basis so, 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 so the real question so, is do you have female doctors oh i've, I've mentioned that but <laughs> don't mind don't viewers viewers don't mind don't mind her she's just bringing a topical issue for discussion she she's not like that i'm sure she's not and obviously she's had kids yeah, and it's not only female doctors course, that are taking yeah. care of you and doctors are great like that we are very focused on the issue at hand as much as we are charming all okay <laughs> <Sister Yen. laughs> as long as we try and focus on the issue at hand and of course we follow all the normal standard procedures right, right. particularly if it's a gender opposite gender yes. doctor that you're saying there's a lady in the room make sure yes. there's a lady in the room make sure that you are chaperone and make sure the lady understands what you need to do and of course you can even use it as a topic for discussion next time right. male or female doctor right. what do you prefer and you right. see they, they usually have 50 50 i'll prefer a male there you go That's thank me. you let's let's okay let's ask you I would prefer a woman, oh please. <laughs> and she, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right. So fair enough. So, I, I so that's what we do. And then she quickly made a point there about if we discover something, we can do something about it. When women come for screen, they think you're going to find a cancer. But we are not. We're going to find precancerous lesions, hmm. which is what you were trying to say <laughs> earlier. And these lesions are things that I use a big grammar there, but they're just changes. Cervical cancer is one of the very few cancers that behave like this. That gives you about five to ten years before it can actually lead to cancer. Another five years before it can kill. That's why wow. it's such a long mm. disease. Do you get stomach ache with it? No, ma. Um, so uh, I have stomach ache now. <laughs> <laughs> let's go on a break. Wait, like, let's go on a quick break. Come back. We'll talk about it because you know, there's a work you're, you're planning for this weekend. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, I you had a question. Yeah, I want to. I wanted to ask because I know most times when people here uh, come for screenings, come for uh, checkups okay. and all of that, they are usually afraid because of money. Oh, cost. They, yeah, the cost. Uh, these things are. To, I have faith. Once I pray, it's God will answer me and all of that. And so people mm. are not able to. So, how much is this uh, screening? Oh, okay. yeah. We we recognize that as a barrier of people accessing care, particularly in a place where the average income is less than you know, uh, 18,000 naira a month uh, for the for the minimum mm -hmm. wages. So we had to remove the cost. That's why the foundation is always looking for help and f for donors. So we make it free on Fridays. Fridays. But women come along with a 500 naira registration fee. And at times when women can't even afford the 500 naira, we have people who say, here's some donations. Yes, so right. really, women should not have any excuse. On other days, if you don't want to avoid the rush, it's 2,500 right. naira, okay. which is Monday to Thursday. And more importantly, that price is also subsidized. Normally, it should be about thousands, uh, and that will keep a lot of people away. Right. And statistically, we realize that when people come, one in 10, of people with screen will be positive. Wow. So now, when you find out they're positive, what's the next step? Um, positive means that you have changes on the cervix, not cancer. Right. So that means a doctor who is trained to deliver a treatment, and the treatment is usually either freezing the area so that it can burn it off, because ice, very extremes of temperature can burn uh, wow. the cervix, and then gives the cervix an opportunity to heal, and new, level, uh, new layers of cervical tissue will grow over it then we can either remove it too, if that doesn't work, using electric wire under anesthesia. It's a more specialist procedure. We call it LEAP. Uh, and then we can give the women vaccination. Because yeah. after you've treated it and she goes back and she's lucky to have sex again, <laughs> she will get infected again. again. So you have to give them the vaccine. And talking about the vaccine, the original uh, motive for the vaccination was meant for pre-sexually active young girls. But research has now shown that all of you, if you are lucky to be having sex, will be infected too. And therefore, you must protect yourself up okay. to the age of uh, I have 50. Peter from Magodo. Peter, are you there? Good morning, Brian. Go ahead, please. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Uh, please, um, the doctor, how to ask the doctor a question? How do you want? The doctor, the doctor, the doctor, the doctor. Yes. Uh, the doctor said the women contact him, um, whatever, maybe the cancer for men or whatever. I know yet that please very well. Can you please explain? Uh, my brother, <laughs> not true. 
Now, uh, it's true. HPV is the name of the virus. You've all heard of HIV. So just substitute the I with P. It's a virus that 99.9% .9 of men carry on our skin, and condoms don't prevent this virus from getting to women. Women don't have any business with HPV. Their cervix is way up inside them, and that's designed to be like that. Until we guys say, I love you, darling. Come on, let's do it. And then we give them the virus. Boom. And they are infected for life. Um, so it's true. However, please don't let Madame beat you up. Just say, Dr. Femi said, it's, you know, our normal flora in our body. We pick it up as children, as we are grown older, uh, <coughs> from our previous sexual partners. And of course, the biggest risk to women are men when it comes to right. HPV. And that's why I wanted to ask, is it, if the man is very faithful to his uh, sexual partner, sexual um, partner, it, 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 she can still get infected. She can still? Yes, because it's something that's normally it's his on body. his body. So, there. so that's why I was trying to reassure her guys so that Madame would not uh, fight him. Okay, so yeah. I know that there's a work coming up um, this weekend that you're going to be organizing. Tell us about the work because people can actually get screened at that event. So please yes. tell us about it. Thankfully, January being the month of cervical cancer awareness, uh, we've been doing a whole lot of fantastic, you know, even in Nollywood celebrity, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention her name. Yeah, uh, yeah, you mentioned a few. Yeah, yes, uh, she, she, she's she been supporting us with this, but we want to round up the whole month with your work, particularly for the people around us in Suruleri where we are based, so they can come and get screened. They know about the plan to screen women for free wow. for, the, uh, for the rest That's of the year. That's all the celebrities that are coming, Kate Henshaw. Uh, Kate is coming, Daniel Lee is coming, uh, Umbu Sibet, because okay. I love the fact that he has this song called Focus. I want women to focus right. on their cervix this year and, uh, and a few others as well. And we, are, venue. we are very grateful to the organization that are sponsoring this. Uh, um, um, can I mention them, please? I can mention them yes, for obvious reasons. We don't want to get into trouble. Yes, please. Uh, but, so, uh, time venue. But uh, we also want people to arrive at 7 30, free t shirts for the first time. AM, 7.30 AM, 7.30 AM, thanks, eh? Uh, 7.30 AM, free t-shirts for everybody who arrives early, at least the first 100. Otherwise, just come with your white t-shirt. We've got loads of flyers. You'll be able to see what some of the things we're talking about and leaflets to share to people around us. And of course, use the opportunity to come and get screened. Bring your friends and Are there going to be lots of screening um, um, sections? Because people are always worried about the, the crowd or the, the lines you have to wait yeah, to get we, screened. By his grace, I'm looking for an opportunity to expand the services I offer. I'm operating out of two uh, centers in Suruleri and uh, Body Thomas. And it's just a building that we can only manage three screening couches. Right. So it takes us a whole day to screen 150, 100 people. So we have styles, ways of managing that sort of crowd. Right. Uh, right. But from a day to day basis, uh, it's, it's really getting. Where are you walking to? Um, we are walking around Suruleri. So we're starting from Body Thomas. We go through Adirogo Sonia to. Uh, Masha, roundabout, stadium, then come back. And, and you can imagine if you live in that part of uh, Suruleri, it's a mix of the high and the low income. So we we'll hope that we we'll get a lot fantastic. of people to be involved. I know, I know you've done and of course, we do a lot of social media as well, yes. so people can follow our, you know. I mean, our, your, even your address is so easy. I will post all these details online because people, I mean, when you talk about cancer, screening, testing, the first thing that comes to your mind is your address. Everybody practically knows that address like the back of their hand. Yes, yes, So, I mean, yes. I think you've done a fantastic job Thank with, you. With, the, with, the, with that campaign. I remember and, five uh, years ago when we started and you invited us here, it's a different journey. Yes, and thanks yes, for the yes. support. And